I would like to cover some of the basic math of simultaneous uh, causality and show how it uh, results in biased estimates of coefficients of interest. So suppose we have uh, two equations. We have an equation of interest, the first equation, where we have some outcome y, uh, and it's a function of x, and we're interested in estimating beta 1. <clears throat> and we have some error term here. But let's suppose we also think that the level of y is a determinant of the level, level of x. So there is some simultaneous causality. x causes y, but y in turn causes x. And this phenomenon, we'll see some examples in a second, we observe this phenomenon all the time. So to see why uh, our estimate of uh, beta 1 would be biased in this uh, situation, uh, think about a situation where we have a high error, a high value of ui. The high value of ui leads there to be a high value of yi, but a high value of yi leads there to be a high value of xi if uh, Gamma, uh, uh, gamma 1 is positive, a high value of yi leads there to be a high value of uh, xi. Uh, and so ui and xi are correlated. The higher is ui, the higher is xi in our system. So when these two variables are correlated, we don't have expected value of ui conditional on xi equals 0. We don't have one of our basic assumptions uh, that enables us to say that our estimate beta 1 hat is unbiased, so it's equal to beta 1, the expected value of beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1. Uh, instead, uh, if the u and the x are correlated, uh, this will not hold. Uh, the expected value of beta 1 hat will not be equal to beta 1. We'll have a biased coefficient. Um, let's do the math. Let's do the proof uh, of that. Uh, in, uh, we can take equation 2, um, and uh, let me erase the stuff here. So, sorry, I have no way to go faster than this. So we have equation 2, xi equals uh, gamma 0, gamma 1, yi plus vi. So uh, if we want to see, well, what's the covariance of xi and ui, well, we can say that xi is equal to this. So we have the covariance of xi and ui is equal to the covariance of gamma 0 plus gamma 1 yi plus vi, just from our definition of xi and ui. So let's take the covariance. So the covariance of these two terms, this term and this term, how they vary together, uh, depends on the covariance of the first term with this term, the covariance of the second term with this term, and the covariance of the third term with this term. But this first term is just a number. Uh, gamma 0 is a parameter. It's, it's not a random variable. It doesn't vary. Um, gamma 1 is also a parameter. Yi is a random variable, right? Our observation of y uh, depends on a random sample. Uh, and vi is the error for that person, also is a random variable. And ui is a random variable. So by the, by the law of covariance, which we uh, saw back in chapter 2, or you saw in math 8 and almost 40, uh, the covariance of a complicated term is equal, in this case, going to be equal to gamma 1 times the covariance between yi and uh, ui plus the covariance of vi and uh, vi and ui. But uh, by assumption, uh, we're going to assume that ui and vi are independent of each other. So the covariance is, is equal to zero of that term. So we're left with this term. Remember what we're doing here covariance of xi ui, we're going to see is equal to uh, gamma 1 uh, times the covariance of yi and ui. But now yi is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xi plus ui. 
Um, so we substitute that in there. So now we have, we do the same thing over again. We take the covariance of this term with this term. So that's going to be equal to beta 1, and we're multiplying everything by gamma 1. So that's going to be beta 1 covariance of xi ui and the covariance of ui with ui. Um, the covariance of ui with ui is, is just uh, is just the variance of ui, so that's just sigma squared um, ui. So we end up with, uh, with this. Uh, remember, we started off here, so we'll put that here. Um, and these two terms are both in our ones on this side uh, of the equation and ones on the other side of the equation. So we need to bring this over to the other side of the equation, the common factor. So we get covariance xi ui minus uh, gamma 1 beta 1 covariance xi ui equals gamma 1 sigma u uh, squared. So the common factor is uh, 1 minus uh, gamma 1 beta 1 here. Here's the minus uh, and there's the there's the 1. So we get the covariance of ui and xi, that covariance of xi ui, is equal to this ratio. Uh, and notice that this is definitely not equal to zero. The numer numerator is uh, is a positive number. This is the this is the variance, so it's always a positive uh, number. Um, so uh, we've just shown then that if we try to estimate this equation alone, uh, the x and the u are correlated, and so the beta one will be biased estimate of the coefficient. So that's our little proof that simultaneous causality results in biased estimates of the coefficient of interest. Let's look at a couple examples. I'll give you three examples. Suppose we have uh, uh, university students and we think there's a relationship between how hard they study and how good their grades are. We measure each of them as an index going from 1 to 10, where 10 is better. So 10 means you study hard, 10 means you get really good good grades. So we'd expect that beta 1 is positive. The more you study, the more um, good grades you get, the higher level of good grades you get. But we might also uh, recognize that we're, we're humans. Uh, students are humans. Uh, we're all humans. And humans uh, like rewards. Um, and humans uh, are, um, uh, are uh, motivated by um, uh, different, uh, m more complex motivations than we might think. And, and so we might think that the way humans work is when they get good grades, um, they, they study hard. Uh, and there's a variety of ways of thinking about that. One way might be that uh, they see themselves uh, in a kind of a gift exchange with the university. If the university does right by them, then they'll do right by the university. Uh, the university being sort of the the classes that they're taking. So if the classes give them good grades, then they'll uh, apply themselves in the classes and uh, study study harder. Um, so we think of the relationship as being somewhat simultaneous. Uh, introspection sort of tells us that, right? Uh, that seems reasonable that that's the way um, things are in, uh, in education systems. Um, there's a kind of a positive feedback loop. If you give me a good grade, then I'm gonna study harder next time. Um, so it's the same setup. If UI is high, then that leads somebody to get good grades, say in their uh, in their first year. Um, but good grades then leads them to study uh, study harder. So now, if we're having a measure, say, of study habits uh, over the course of a year or several years, and their grades over the course of several years, the UI, the unobserved error, will be correlated uh, with their with their study habits and our uh, estimated coefficient beta 1 will be um, biased. That is, uh, if we just estimate this equation alone and, and act like there is no simultaneous causality, it'll look like studying hard really generates high grades. Um, and we're forgetting that high grades are leading people to uh, study hard. So the beta 1 is conflating those two effects, that simultaneity effect. Let's take a second example, a uh, classic example of supply and demand. Uh, let's imagine we observe the price in the market, and we think that that's determined by the quantity demanded, but we also think that the price in the market uh, determines the quantity supplied. Um, and uh, 
we have an equilibrium condition uh, that the quantity supplied is always equal to the quantity demanded. So we can write out the two equations like this, where we just put the price and the quantity. Um, since all we observe is the quantity transacted, we don't observe the supply schedule and we don't observe the demand schedule, that is the demand curve and the supply curve. All we observe is the quantity demanded, which is equal to the quantity supply. Uh, and we observe the price in the marketplace. So if UI is high, um, then that leads there to be, let's say, a high price. Uh, a high price generates um, maybe a higher quantity um, supplied. And so now Q and U are correlated. And so our estimate of beta 1, the slope of the demand curve, uh, will, will be biased, will be meaningless. We're not estimating a slope uh, at all. We're, just, we're estimating some... Um, uh, some number that uh, is, uh, comes out of the interplay between uh, supply and demand. So uh, that's our second uh, example. And a third example is going back to Stock and Watson. Um, we have uh, student-teacher ratio determining test scores, but it's entirely possible that the superintendent of schools decides what the, the student-teacher ratio should be based on uh, based on the test scores. So in districts that have high test scores, the superintendent of schools says, well, we can uh, have smaller class sizes. So again, the error term will be correlated with the student-teacher ratio, and so we'll have a biased estimate of beta 1.